And of course, uh, welcome back to The Breakfast. That was a little bit of history of what happened on this day. We're now moving into our first major conversation for today, where, we're, of course, we're going to be speaking um, more extensively on the report that was put out by the Judicial Panel of Inquiry yesterday. This morning, we're going to be speaking by one of the NSAS protesters, Renu Oduala, uh, who joins us uh, via Zoom this morning. Uh, good morning, Renu, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, um, I'm sure that, of course, uh, emotions have been, you know, flying in different directions since uh, the report was put out yesterday. Um, but I, I want you, you know, to start with, you know, your thoughts, first of all, before we go into details. Um, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm sure that none of it was actually shocking to you in the first place. Um, but what did you, first of all, think when you saw that report? Well... I've been on the panel and I left, so some details were not actually hidden to me regarding what the eventual um, report was going to be like. However, he, the part that was shocking to me was um, the part that the chief pathologist of Lagos State um, actually said they recovered close to 100 dead bodies, you know, all over the Eagle State, um, from Yaba, Mushi, Alausa, and Keja, and like, during the protest. And this reiterated my point, because I was always at Alausa, and Keja. And then police officers shot at protesters at Alausa, and Keja also on the 20th of October 2020. It just seemed like that news um, was died down because of what's happening at the Lake Gate. And then we say that this isn't a massacre. I mean, in, in Mushin, there were reports that over 12 people were killed on the 20th of October 2020. In Yaba, our police officers were going on a rampage of killing people as if we were in, were in Sambisa Forest or something and they were fighting with terrorists. Lagosians were killed all over Lagos. I mean, we should ask the government. It's important that you, you talked about emotions. It's important that at times we put emotions aside and ask the necessary questions. What was the hand arm in demanding for an end to police brutality? That like young people, the people all over the country had to be further killed. I said yesterday that the youth of today are the leaders of tomorrow, but then you've killed us, us, us all off. How do you expect us to be leaders? With what has happened, it is important also that our media begins to ask the necessary question. That do we think our policymakers are actually focused on ending police brutality or focused on how to just shut down citizen voices? I mean, the, the voices of young Nigerians are being silenced in this country every day. I, I, I was one of my speaking engagements and, and I said that. The Nigerian state has no intentions of ending police brutality. It seemed like I was being partitioned because I'm an hands protester. But then I did not benefit from my indignity. I did not benefit from my, from my oppression, from my humiliation. It's obvious that they're trying to protect their political interests. I, I, it's, it's, it's scary to think that close to 100 people were killed just in Lagos. We're not even talking about the other states. Just in Lagos, close to 100 people were killed, and then the government came out and said there was no massacre. And there was an extensive amount of cover-up, an extensive amount of work put, put in by state government to actually cover this up. The federal government, the state government, the, 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 the security operatives, the management of the LCC, everybody was involved in an elaborate cover-up. We deserve some explanations for crying out loud. All right, so let, let's get to, you know, it again. Uh, it's over a year, of, of course, and finally the report is here. As one who was part of the protest, are you impressed with the entire process, the time it took, uh, you know, up until this moment, I mean, the outcome, and even the decision that has been put, the recommendation that has been put out? Are you impressed? Well, um, it's important to know that the actual report that is out there is not... The reports, um, the, the the original report submitted at the uh, uh, to the Lagos state government. This was a leaked report. I guess you know it's going to be a final edit or something. It is the report. I mean, it's something that's going to definitely come out, and then people will see that it is. But then it's a final edit, I guess. Um, however, I mean, the panel has done extremely well, and they should be applauded. I mean, I, personally, I think that the panel should be applauded because despite of 
all forms of gaslighting and whitewashing and harassment by the government, they still stood their ground and made, made sure that um, the truth, you know, came out. And in fact, I didn't expect even the panel to also put in it that the, the conduct of the Nigerian army was exacerbated by their refusal to allow ambulances to render medical assistance to injured protesters, which we also saw um, on, on, on live videos everywhere on the 20th of October. For me, um, one of the recommendations that personally, personally, I, I, I didn't actually agree with was that of an apology. I do not think that, um, well, people may need an apology, but then personally to me, I do not think that protesters need an apology. I mean, what happened at the Lekki Togate was planned and premeditated. The same very government that sponsored the gaslighting. I, I always want to mention Lai Mohammed, but then I'll, I'll keep that down today. They sponsored the gaslighting and smear campaign on us to make us believe lies. Would they, have, would they be able to do the right thing? I mean, the question that needs to be answered is, who will be resigning from the positions of this, apart from the military operatives that actually made sure that they killed a lot of people um, at a peaceful protest? Who will be prosecuting the prosecutors? Somebody gave the order. We do not need an apology. We need justice. The people that have come together to commit this mass atrocities against young Nigerians have to be book to book. And then people keep talking about the popular Oputapane and how the reports may be thrown under the table. I'd like to say that currently Nigerians are going to stand and demand because these people are not, are not ghosts. The people that have been mentioned in the, in the reports are not ghosts. They're not, they're, not, they're not fake characters. They should be prosecuted. People cannot lose their lives in vain. We will not allow uh, want people people from, from somewhere to come and tell us that, oh, the reports would actually be out in a few years. No. Right now, and as of this moment, people have been named. Those people should come out and they should be prosecuted. Because like someone I know say, you know, the, the law of the land is bigger than, than anybody. I didn't need to hope, however, from the wonderful people on the panel. Yes, yes, it is applaudable. And right. I think that there's actually hope for Nigeria. All right, Renu, there's a, a talk about a, a white paper. And of course, uh, the chief of defense staff, Lucky Rabo, and um, a few others from the government side, I've said that you know there are inconsistencies with the report. Um, they are also expecting or waiting for a white paper to eventually be put out uh, concerning this. How, how do you think that this would play out? And do you think that uh, you know Nigerians should also wait for that white paper before um, we get 100% um, clarity on what we're dealing with here? Thank you very much for this important question. Um, I saw the chief of staff, you know. Um, statements as well. And I'd like us to review the state actors and their enablers who join hands in gaslighting us. Starting from the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, Malami, who said that hoodlums wearing army uniforms may be behind Lekito Gate shooting. He actually said that probably hoodlums may have been hired to create a scene. Going on to the Nigerian army, the Major General John um, Ineche, he went on TV to say that the live videos were photoshopped and cropped. The chief of staff at the time, um, General, Major General Toko Burata, insisted that there was no single corpse at the Lekki Toge shooting in December. Where is he today? He has been given a diplomatic position, despite committing so many war crimes against Nigerian citizens. Where am I coming to the fact that chief of staff has no right to say that um, um, uh, whatever has come out of the panel um, is inconsistent. It needs to wait for the white paper, as obviously there is a leaked report. And there was the, the final report that was submitted to the Lagos State Panel. I mean, these people are state actors. What do you expect to say? They're going to definitely delve into the. I mean, nobody is selling anybody not to criticize or look at what the panel has put out. However, these people, these very same people, have shown themselves consistent in denying what happened during the NSAS protest. So they're partisan, and, 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 that, and that is clear. However, I agree with you that um, the public should wait for the white panel. I mean, we've seen the leaked report, and the leaked report has given us you know, uh, uh, an adequate, you know, view into what the final report is actually going to be like. So, yes, I think that we should wait um, for the white paper. However, I'm also thinking, I mean, the, the state government was indicted in the panels. So, 
um, it, it's a bit unclear what their white paper is actually going to look like. Well, However, aside, it is important not, yeah. to, not to meditate, you know. Please a, go Aside those in government, you know, I, I, what, what are your thoughts to those, you know, around us, you know, those on social media who have now, you know, are still looking for loopholes, those who have said, oh, the, 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 you know, the document wasn't signed, you know, and still looking out for, you know, different loopholes here and there. Um, on, I'm sure you know, you know, on social media, you've seen some of all those comments. Um, the, doc the document wasn't signed. Yes, like I said, that was in the reports that were submitted to the legal state panel. It was a final edit um, that was leaked out. For the people that were on social media, you know, I... I have clashes with them at times, and then I, I wouldn't want to go into that today. But what we expect of the very same people that have denied the killings of their own fellow human beings. People were killed. People, I, I mean, except the ones who had them bad feet or, or, or try to deceive ourselves. We all know what happened at Lekki Toge. We thought without the panel's report. We didn't need the panel report to prove to us that a massacre actually happened. It actually happened. And then these people, you know, they're, they're, they're paid state actors. They've been paid to actually make Nigerians doubt their own sanity. Even frontliners began to doubt their own sanity regarding, I began to ask myself, did I actually participate in the protest at all? Because of the way these people went on with, you know, sponsored propaganda. So I have no, um, intentions of actually having with people that have been consistent in denying the deaths that have been consistent in denying the clear deaths of nigerian citizens however um i think that this to said one thing and, and it's not directly applicable but then he said that if you are neutral in situations of injustice or you keep quiet you know um i i, I know i have no you know uh, problems with those who have been paid you know to actually sponsor to uh, who have been sponsored rather, to attack the protest however for those that are neutral currently for those that are keeping quiet currently in this situation this one too to say if you're neutral in situations of injustice you have chosen the side of the oppressor and for those that are currently denying the death of nigerian citizens we remember every one of you we will not forget you are our enemies because those that can sit down and deny the clear deaths of of nigerian citizens of young people Innocent young people that were killed, every one of you, you are enemies. And then we will not forget that. We will not forget the panel report clearly states that Nigerian soldiers killed NSAS protesters and removed corpses to suppress evidence. What more, you know, what, what more uh, um, um, worst, worst form of humanity can, can, can this be? And then I'm going to come to our popular minister of information, um, um, Lai Mohamed. The Nigerian media will actually do well by asking the Minister of Information to, to uh, uh, explain his jargon you know, to us over the last one year. I mean, there have been a total of over five times that Lai Mohammed has been quoted saying that there was no killing at the Lekki Tonga shooting. It surprises me that he has been one person in this country to always armor on fake news and that I think he said it can cause World War Three. We can see that the minister statements about of what is destabilizing in this country is actually the one spreading fake news. Rather than speak truth to power, he is consistently gaslighted, spread fake news, whitewash and told utter and embarrassing lies to the world regarding the killings, regarding the trauma inflicted on young Nigerians by the Nigerian government. I said yes, then I think I should ask now. Is the minister of information not embarrassed? I mean, uh, leaders should be in love with humanity and not publicity, like Lai Mohamed. You know, we understand that many of the people that were killed, many of even frontliners that were, you know, um, talking about the NSAS protest, were mostly children of nobody. But then the children of nobody uh, deserve a, a chance at life too. We do not deserve to be killed off while the lights were switched off, singing our own national anthem, believing that our leaders were going to listen to us, waving our national flag, uh, uh, kill, killed by the very same people who are supposed to protect us. I mean, let us even check the cases of um, police brutality in the, in the country today, the rising cases of police brutality. Ever since last year, last year, the Nigerian 
young people stood in the streets, both in, within the borders of the country and beyond, to demand for an end to police brutality, the extortion, the profiling, the harassment, you know, by Nigerian security forces. What is the situation today? Is the case that the cases of police brutality not increasing every day, each day? Expulsions. I mean, I talked on TV one day that the average Nigerian police officers, you know, they make thousands of dollars per day extorting young people. It is ridiculous the way um, the Nigerian our Nigerian policymakers have now ignored what exactly brought young people out, you know, to the streets last year. And then they say that we should not talk, we should not protest, you know, we should keep quiet. How do we keep when we are being killed off? How do we keep quiet when the police that are supposed to be our friends are actually the armed robbers? Thank you. All right. So um, I would read, I'd like to read, uh, you know, part of that uh, report. Of course, we're waiting for the white paper. Uh, but let's just look at this. Page 295 of the Lagos State Panel on the Lekki Togate Massacre Report says, it was alleged and corroborated that the soldiers had their vans packed at the Lekki Togate and removed as many bodies and corpses as fallen protesters which they took away with their vans. The report had earlier said the 11 Nigerians were killed by Nigerian soldiers until date. It is the killers that have been asking to provide the bodies and what have you. Now, and also to say that findings of this panel had confirmed that 11 people were killed by, uh, and their bodies were carted away in the, the army van. So um, do you think that the white paper will answer some questions? Because there are some valid questions that Nigerians have been asking prior to this time. Who gave the order? Because looking at the leak report, the leak report has not stated who gave the order. We have not been able to find out who actually gave the order for us to have, you know, uh, the soldiers, the military at the toll gate. And we're talking about the bodies, these bodies, where are the bodies, where, where have they been taken to? So do you think that, you know, the white paper will answer the questions of where these bodies are kept? How have they been preserved? If they, uh, are they preserved or they have been buried? What has happened to the bodies? What's the current situation of these bodies up, up until this moment? So do you think that um, the white people would answer some of those questions? Because there seem to be a lot of gray areas. Well, I do not think that the white paper would actually answer the question of who gave the order. We actually know who gave the order. Um, only that we want clear answers. I mean, who could have given the order to our own security military operatives, if not the people in power, if not the people that were elected into power? And then I I also read the panel report, um, um, final edit leak report, and then, you know, it's it's necessary to state one thing that even the panel's report was at the most you know very um limited considering those that came to the panel you talked about how the people who killed young people at the protest ground are still the same people asking where are the bodies a lot of families were intimidated into silence i i dare say that we may not actually um ever know the true numbers of casualties um, at the Lekki Togi because I, 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 I know for a fact that more than the number that were on that list were actually killed. We may, we may not be able to ascertain how many people were actually killed. Many were handed into homes, many were threatened. And the panel report said that as well, how many families were threatened into keeping quiet, into not saying anything. Many were, you know, there were voice notes sent to people. People, families were called that they would kill them and nothing would happen if they ever come out and say that their child was killed, you know, um, at the lucky target. So I, I think that the panel has done extremely well in stating the facts that actually, as a, as, the fact that of what has happened, right? It is now up to Nigerians, knowing that no one, I mean, the Nigerian army came to the panel and said that they were on their way to Aja to quell a, 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 a riot that is happening, that was a, a, a unknown riot that was happening there. And then they happened by chance to stumble to pass by the Lekki toll gate and then they they gave water and food to protesters you know and after doing this they did not go on to where they were going anymore they went back to Bonny camp this is ridiculous so we know that nobody nobody from anywhere i mean a normal citizen would not call the nigerian army to say go to the Lekki toll gate obviously the people that that they are I, I, I mean, Stella sang a song and, and called, 
I don't want to do that on national TV today. But then the people that we've elected into power are actually the ones who, who ordered the Nigerian military operatives, including the Nigerian police force. The people have said that, that even after the Nigerian military left, our very own police officers that we were trying to ask for, for an increase in salaries for, and, and trying to see that, you know, there should be adequate provision for them in, in their service to the nation, actually also went to the Lekki Togate and kept on shooting at protesters, not just through that night, but then in the morning as well, they were shooting at protesters after they did not only kill protesters, they shoot at them. They also try to cover all their actions by picking up bullets from the crime scene in a bid to destroy evidence. So we, this this will not be sanctioned, uh, um, except except we're, we're not in the same nation. I mean, that's when uh, security officers can go rogue, especially the Nigerian army. We all know that they do not just go on operations. So the people that we put in power, the people that are in charge of these um, uh, um, security forces, Nigerians should be asking them the necessary questions. Right. Nigerians, it's time that Nigerians stand up and begin to ask the necessary questions. Who right, gave Reno, the order? Reno. What happened at the Lekito Gate? Our own our policy makers and leaders have to answer these questions. All right, Reno, um, we have um, additional Gunlano, who's a lead counsel for the NSAS protesters, joining us. But, Reno, just before we, we speak with Mr. Gunlano, I, I want you to share on, you, you're speaking about Nigerians must go and ask questions. In 30 seconds, please, just quickly share, do you think that there is enough anger, you know, after seeing this report across Nigeria today? Do you think that this is really, uh, for what you've seen, it's, you know, mostly just social media, you know, anger, tweets here and there, uh, but nothing, you know, more than that? Um, in 30 seconds, please. Well, I think that many young people, um, after watching the live videos, participating with all their mind, you know, and hope in, in, their, in their faces, um, and, and seeing what happened, you know, and then the smell like the smell campaign, the gaslighting campaign, you know, the propaganda started happening. Many spent the better part of this year battling anxiety, you know, panic attacks, depression, losing our minds over the fact that many of us were tagged terrorists by our own government, who were at the same time actively denying the deaths of young people, you know, and it is horrific. I, I'd like to talk about myself as a 23 year old Nigerian, I'm in shock. And that shock probably translates to anger currently. I mean, shock that young people holding the national flag turned into targets in a firing range. You know, that the Lekki Gate was turned into some forest, like I said earlier. So I'd like to ask, do you think that witnessing the, the death of young people like me and then having the, the government deny it enables me to continue believing that my country means well for me? What is the assurance that I, I will not become a victim tomorrow? Many young people today are seeing humans in leadership positions in our country, right. but we we, we know iota of humanity. Right. So yes. I think that the, the right expression is actually shock. Everybody is shocked. I All mean, right. the anger could come, right. but then currently, right, really. everybody is shocked. All right, Let, let's bring in um, additional Gunlano, who's a lead counsel for the NSAS protesters. I'm sure you both uh, met on the panel. Mr. Gunlano, thanks for joining us. Good morning to you. Thank you. Good morning. I remember the last time you were here, when you, of course, were in the studio with us, uh, there are certain things that you didn't go ahead and say, you know, because you were waiting for the panel to be concluded. Um, so, so now let's get your thoughts. You've read uh, the report. I'm sure that some of the, these things, of course, you are familiar with even before the report was put out. Um, but what are your thoughts on some of these very, very shocking um, findings on the report? Well, thank you so much. The, the findings are not shocking. The findings that are shocking if they were un 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 unexpected. But for those of us who participated uh, before the panel, who appeared before the panel as counsel, who had testimonies, who adduced evidence by way of witnesses and petitioners, and who cross examined uh, uh, witnesses brought forward by the Nigerian army, the Nigerian police, the Lagos state government, the uh, Lekki concession uh, company, we are not shocked. I've said before, uh, and I'm still saying, what I said is that as to fear hearing, plenty of that at the, at the panel, the panel, as to industry, 
plenty of that, that what only remain will be the courage, whether the panel will find the courage uh, to say the truth as they find it uh, uh, mercifully enough, they got that. And that's why they came up with the findings that they must necessarily come with. So I'm, I'm, I'm not shocked. Uh, the happening uh, there on 20th October 2020 was a shock, was terrible. But the findings by that panel was not a shock to me. I was expecting it. Okay, so I, I, I asked Reno this question and I'm going to, you know, put it back now to you. Uh, the panel for, from the report that we have seen, it confirmed that uh, bodies, I mean, persons were killed, about 11 of them, and the army actually took these bodies away in their van. The question is, this report hasn't been able to, it does not establish where these bodies are at the time, and who the persons, I mean, uh, where the bodies are, what is the current state of these bodies, because families, we have actually interacted with, you know, um, one person, I mean, there's a member, a mother, who actually lost uh, her son in the course of all of this. And up until now, they don't, where, where the bodies are. So we're hoping that the report will probably would have given, you know, definite answers to some of this question as to where the body is right now and if the bodies were cut away, whether they keep them, who even gave the order, and all of that. I, I'd like to share your thoughts on this. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, let me say something. Uh, before that panel, the, the main culprit, uh, the main accused body, happened to be the military. And you find out that the summons were served on them. You know, were served on, uh, I remember, on uh, Belo, who led the troops, on uh, Manka or Mata, who came to put a halt to the shooting. These were eyewitnesses, but they ran away. <laughs> they didn't come. The army ran away, you understand? They ran away. They only brought one Major General Taiwo, who was not an eyewitness, uh, who came to do a PR job for the military, but even his testimony did not wash up, you know. But what I'm trying to say is that the body alleged to have principally taken away corpses was not available before that panel, you know. They ran away. And then you remember that um, uh, the antecedents of the security forces of Nigeria portray that they behave like Oro. They say, I get Oro, no one in Yoruba. They know that court used to disappear people. You remember when the security forces visited recently this year, July 1, the home of Sunday Goho? They actually killed people and took two bodies away. Those two bodies are yet to produce you today. So that, there's nothing mysterious about about these things, they wanted to disappear evidence. And one of the ways to try to disappear evidence is to take away the bodies away. And uh, the, if um, if we know our history now, uh, there was the famous case of Apalara, the cleric. Apalara was killed in 1958 by some um, rival religious groups. Up to today, his body was never found. Yet, the, it was tried, and all the, those people were tried, and a score of them were hung, they were convicted. So the issue of uh, where are the bodies, at least there's one body where, uh, uh, where that we, we pointed out that uh, was taken to a uh, place in uh, Adamawa by the family. They took him away, I think that's Solomon Abuta and all that. So the, 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 as it is, it will not have a very, very complete uh, report because uh, the bodies who would have opened up uh, did not cooperate fully with the, with the panel. This is the truth. They managed to, that's the military, just managed to come, then they got scared, they panicked. When they saw the fire of press examination, they panicked and ran away. Now they are suffering it. And uh, you see, if I may say this briefly, I had Leo Irabo, uh, the chief of army staff, say something that the Nigerian army is a professional boy, and I was just laughing. How professional are you? When you refuse to be subjugated, sub, subjugated to civil authorities. I mean, if you are a modern army, you must be under civil control. A civil authority issue you summons. You snubbed it. You didn't come. Now you are complaining. You say you're a rich professional, but professional um... shooting at people, shooting at youth, shooting at people, waving flags at people. 
which professional body? How professional are you to even come when you want to disperse a crowd? Okay, uh, Mr. Gunlano, Mr. Gunlano, for the want of time, let me just quickly chip this in before my colleague uh, comes through with his question. So how then do we now dismiss police officers and military officers when we cannot ascertain who exactly shot at this person? Because we're saying uh, the recommendation, how then we dismiss? Let me answer you. You see, <laughs> uh, that's what we call corporate responsibility, corporate liability. There were troops that was brought there. I mean, what, what are you looking for? The name of the troop commander is known. Okay, uh, Lieutenant Colonel or whatever, uh, Bill or something. It was known. Omarka was there. I mean, they, if the military, if, look, let me say something. A new regime will come. A year, a day of accountability will come. It could be 50 years. Will come. You see, these people were some come and tell your side of the story. You refused. The police that came that were telling a whole lot of lies uh, before the panel, we have not been there since 14th of October to 20th of October. Yet, when they some on the 20th, they said they were not there at all. On 21st, they were not there at all. Yet, the diary they submitted, the diary, the, the arms diary of their station that they submitted before the panel, it showed that out of 35 policemen on the 20th, that were supposed to be at um, Maroko police station, only 30 or 14 of them were given arms for guard duty. All the others were posted out, and yet a, a DPO and um, the head of operations in Lagos will come to the panel and say, oh, we were, we are just still put in our, in our, in our, in our barrack, in our station. The same thing on the 21st. You see, about right. 20 people Samuel were out, armed. So let me tell you, uh, and, uh, as they say in Yoruba, you are the one who have refused to be responsible and apprehend a criminal. Your son is not a laundry man and he's coming home, it's not even a fashion dress, he's coming home with a baggage of clothes. See, enough, enough evidence has been adduced by the coup of a panel. Straight. To accountability nationally or internationally there is enough evidence All right. to um, identify and tie responsibility to certain officers all right additional going on out, um th this uh, this conversation can go on for days um and it would you know continue to be you know to you know unveil many layers that need to be spoken about the international community the anambra panel the mushin massacres it's also being called there's so much that we need to talk about but we're out of time um we of course will have to extend this conversation to a different day and bring you in again Addis additional gulano thank you so much for speaking with us renew oduala um thank you also for your time this morning and for you know the, the work that you've done so far we we'll look for looking forward to speaking with you again also Bye. all right uh, we're going to move the conversation to something else uh, now another very sad story the death of a nigerian itu babalola in cote d'ivoire we're speaking this morning with journalist david hundane after the short break